Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. I've done a bit between episodes. I've done a ton of research. So basically everything that I could research, given what we are producing right now, I have done. So all of the Tier 3 stuff has been researched. I turned in all of that. Uh, I went back and I got uh, jump pads as well. We don't have... Oh, and I uh, researched improved melee combat from Tier 4, which will give us access to a new weapon that's better than our little uh, taser thing. Uh, also, I did a lot of stuff here at the MAM and unlocked a bunch of this stuff too. So basically just a lot of taking the stuff that we're producing, turning it in, uh, and just you know, getting stuff. So a few notable things that we now have access to. We now have the map. Check it out. It's a thing. Um, <laughs> you have to unlock the map in this game. Uh, but this is where we are living. It's like right here. We don't have the full thing visible because we haven't explored the entirety of the map. Uh, but yeah, that's this is where our base is set up. Uh, we've also now got access to... Let's see... Uh, we still need to unlock this stuff, but we now have radar technology, radio signal scanning, and the Explorer, which is like a vehicle you can use to get around. We don't actually have these unlocked yet, but we have access. We now have the ability to unlock them, let's put it that way. Uh, I got the uh, medical inhaler, which fully restores your health. Um, and up here, this is the important one. Researching Caterium, uh, we have some really good stuff. Blade Runners. These are essentially boots that will let you move really fast. You can run faster with these on. We want to get those going. Uh, we have the AI Limiter, which we haven't unlocked, but we can easily get the stuff to do it, uh, which will give us the Smart Splitter and a Power Switch and even more stuff for automation. And we can get Tier 2 Power Poles, so we can connect more than four lines to a single pole, which is awesome. Plus, I did a bunch of uh, research using the Awesome Sync, so we now have access to, um, let's see here, beams, pillars, ladders, uh, just a bunch of different stuff. Long story short, I spent a lot of time between episodes just dumping resources into these various different research sinks, and uh, unlocking stuff, so pretty cool. Um, if we follow this power line over here, I set up a little temporary Caterium mine and processing center, and this is where we are getting our Caterium from that I used for the uh, the research over there to get all like the, the smart splitters and all that kind of stuff. Currently, we're dumping this stuff into an awesome sink, uh, but we're about to change that, because this is actually going to be a super important resource for us to unlock things. So I'm actually just going to dismantle that awesome sink temporarily. And let's just throw down... How much does this actually produce? 60 per minute. Okay, so with a single tier 1 conveyor belt, uh, we can do stuff. We'll probably optimize and automate this in the future here, but let's just dump a storage container there just for the moment and we'll just kind of run this sort of spaghetti line um, and it'll get the job done. This will be fine. So this is going to be producing quick wire. Quick wire is what we are going to use to unlock all sorts of goodies. So that's pretty sweet. Also, we can do a bunch of this manually because this uh, production, it, it's got kind of one of those like weird ratios where it takes 45 caterium per minute to make 15 ingots and this is a normal node so we're producing 60 so it's kind of like weird to split it in such a way like i suppose i could put down two smelters and then underclock them to make 30 per minute each or to take 30 per minute each or, like we could find ways around it but since this is just a temporary setup anyway i think i'm okay with it but yeah we're going to uh, take a bunch of this quick wire and use it to unlock the remaining stuff that we can get uh, from the MAM over there. Well, after a bit more research and a little bit of crafting and stuff, I am now fully geared up. I've got the new and improved Xeno Basher 
baddie zapper, and I have a set of blade runners, so I can run around uh, about, I don't know if it's twice as fast, but I'm definitely faster than I was before. Also, we have unlocked uh, AI limiters, which now give us access to smart splitters. These things are pretty sweet. So if we just plop one of these down, uh, you have your input just like a regular splitter, but then you can choose how things output. And you can be like, hey, on the left, I want this to output cables, and on the right, I want it to output whatever. And the couple real, the, the real important things with these is that there's an overflow setting. So if we take one of these and we plop it, for example, on, say, one of these lines over here, we can say, hey, if these chests are full, or if these uh, storage containers here are completely full, um, and these resources aren't making it in there because they're full, just divert those to, say, an awesome sink, for example, to generate points for the awesome shop. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to do, is I'm going to hook up, uh, essentially, I don't know if I'm going to do all of our production to this. I probably will just do all of our production to one of these, uh, to basically divert any additional extra resources we're creating to, uh, an awesome sink or two. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, because it's been a couple hours since the last clip, um, but I, there was a couple issues with the water piping. Uh, in the coal factory, I fixed them. It, I, I basically just had to add, uh, I had to add a couple of pumps and add an extra pipe uh, to each side. So wasn't a big deal, but I just noticed that it wasn't quite working right. Um, these smart splitters are awesome. They require AI limiters though, and AI limiters are not super hard to uh, to automate. We need quick wire, which we are now producing. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I, we're now producing quick wire. I decided to uh, essentially revamp that little quick wire temporary setup over here and turn it into a proper one. So uh, over here, we are now producing 100 quick wire per minute. Uh, essentially, it is a miner that splits into two smelters, which then goes into two constructors. They're both uh, underclocked to. Uh, consume all of the resources exactly, uh, and it, it ultimately results in 100 quick wire per minute. So we're going to take advantage of that. Um, some of the other things, though, we've unlocked via research, uh, we now can produce steel. And that's a very important resource for us, because a lot of the, in fact, I think pretty much all of our progression at this point, uh, all of our additional research, uh, research needs steel like if we look at hyper tubes we need steel pipes and uh for advanced steel production we need steel pipes and logistics we need steel so we got to get into steel here and the way that you make steel is by taking uh a foundry i don't have this stuff for it it's it's coal and iron you combine coal and iron in a foundry and it makes steel that that's how you do it uh so i need to go find a source of coal and iron somewhere out in the world, preferably relatively close to each other, so we can start producing steel uh, and start automating some of this stuff. I want to automate the production of, um, of AI limiters. I want to get our production lines hooked up to smart splitters to dump any overflow into an awesome sink, uh, and I want to get steel going as quickly as possible. Well, my friends, bit of a progress update. Uh, I did go ahead and connect up a lot of stuff to the splitters. Uh, so our overflow is now being dumped into these awesome sinks whenever we do have it. Uh, and we've got, I've actually gotten quite a lot of uh, the coupons. We've unlocked some new stuff there as well. Street lights, um, double ramps, some more... Uh, various foundation stuff, all sorts of good stuff coming in there. Uh, so that's all done. And we have now fully automated the production of steel beams and steel pipes. So uh, I'll show you this real quick. This bridge is bringing all of our steel ingots back to base. Uh, and the way that this works is you can kind of see it there off in the distance. 
So we have... I can probably just zoom way, way in. There we go. So that is a pure iron node creating 120 uh, iron ore per minute. Down there, we have two normal coal nodes, which combined create 120 coal per minute, and they are feeding into three foundries, which uh, I have slightly underclocked so that they take uh, 40 of each resource per minute, and they're creating 120 steel ingots per minute. So it works out pretty well, and then it basically just takes this big, huge conveyor belt all the way across this bridge, uh, and this is going to probably end up being kind of a bus down the uh, in the future where we'll have multiple resources uh, stacked on conveyor belts that will essentially follow this bridge. Pretty much everything we produce over there will uh, will ultimately come this way, I think. Although this base is really starting to kind of be very disorganized. Uh, I'm either going to have to redo some stuff or we might just move now that we have coal power and stuff and a decent amount of resources and technology, we might move to another area and, like, create a proper base from the beginning that's all, like, nice and organized and stuff. Uh, and then we'll still just take the resources from here and transport them over. But anyway, once we take our 120 steel ingots, uh, they feed into three constructors, one of which is dedicated to steel beams, and two of which are dedicated to steel pipes. So it is fully using all of the resources that are coming in, and we are now mass producing all this good stuff, which is great, uh, because we can use this stuff now to unlock more goodies like Logistics Level 3, which will give us even better conveyor belts. Uh, and we can unlock a few other things as well. So a bunch of the Tier 3 technologies, uh, so that's good. Let me just grab a bit of concrete there. Since I know one of them, at least. One of the unlocks requires it. So let's see, what should we do first? We can do advanced steel production, which would give us a Mark II miner. That's super useful. Uh, and then we've got Logistics Mark III. I think we'll do Logistics Mark III first, since I have the resources on me, like right this minute. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, so that gets Monster. us good stuff. Legit. And then, he, oh, by the way, little details. This thing launches and takes the resources back. Someone's been commenting on that, like, why don't you ever look at the thing? It, 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 there's all sorts of little cool details like that in this game, just so you're aware. Anyway, uh, <laughs> So yeah, we've got uh, advanced steel production. This is probably the next thing I'll research. And we'll probably research hypertubes as well. These will help us get around pretty quick. Uh, I'm gonna need encased industrial beams though, and we have to unlock advanced steel production first in order to do that. The Mark II miners are going to be excellent. That's going to essentially double the amount of resources, I think. I think they are twice as effective as the Mark Ones. Don't quote me on that, though. I'll have to test it and find out. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, and we can also probably, now that we have steel, we can probably get some stuff researched from over here as well. Uh, I've got two temporary assemblers set up right here. These are just making uh, smart plating because eventually we're going to want to get to Tier 4, dump some more stuff into the space elevator. You can see I'm going to need 500 smart plating. There's a lot. So uh, I had these set up before to mass produce rotors for me. So uh, I do have some of those as well, uh, but I've switched them over to smart plating for now. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to work and uh, hopefully when you, when you see me again, I'll have some more stuff unlocked and some more things to show you. A bit of a progress update for you. Um, using these assemblers and our newfound steel production, I think I have managed to get together all of the necessary parts to advance to the next tier using our space elevator. So that's pretty exciting. I've already got uh, the smart plating and the smart uh, wiring, I think it is, in there. And last but not least, I just got to dump in all of this versatile framework. So let's seal this up. This will unlock tier five and six which is pretty sweet, and we will send that up into space. 
So get that going. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Okay, so now, next step, we're going to need 2,500 versatile framework and two things that I've never seen before. So uh, let's go see what we've unlocked. Let's let's go see what we now can can research at the hub, because uh, this is pretty exciting. This is farther than I've been in Satisfactory, so I have no idea. I'm assuming, I'm hoping uh, we'll have access to Tier 2 fluid pipes. That's the big thing that I really need right now. Let's see here. Tier 5 and 6. So oil processing, so we can actually make oil power, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe this is just processing the oil and then the... Okay, expanded power infrastructure fuel generator. Okay, so this burns the oil and this pro and, and this oil processing produces it. Okay, got it. But we do have valves here, which are super useful. Uh, we can get industrial manufacturing. Okay, these are the two space elevator parts that I didn't recognize. So we can make computers, trucks, and a manufacturer. Craft three or four parts. Into it. So this is basically like uh, an assembler, but bigger. Alternative fluid transport. So we can load fuel up into... It looks like barrels. Packaged water, packaged oil. Okay, that's kind of cool. I guess that makes it easy to transport. Uh, so this is all nice. Gas mask. This will let us walk through gassy spots. That seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and then tier six. We can get a jet pack. So we won't take fall damage if we land somewhere. That's pretty nice. We can get trains going. These are useful for transporting huge amounts of stuff at once. And Pipeline Engineering Mark II. We can get upgraded pipes that transport three uh, or 600 units of fluid versus 300. This is probably the first thing... Oh, actually, no. We need rubber and plastic for this, as well as heavy modular frames, which means we need oil processing first to unlock plastic and rubber and then we need um, where do you get heavy modular frames from uh okay I don't think I have access to those I'll have to look it up but either way uh, we want to get to Pipeline Engineering Mark II as quickly as possible. Because if we look at our power generation, eh, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're quickly running out of power. We're only using about 650, 600, 700 megawatts of power right now out of the 900 that we're producing. If I turn on all of these biofuel generators, that'll give us another roughly 300 megawatts of power. But I really don't want to have to rely on the biofuel generators, so I think we need to set up another power plant of some sort. And if we go over this way, let's just see here, do a little slidey slide. Uh, you can see I've built kind of a bridge going way over there, up on top of this sort of plateau, there is a lake. And near that lake, there are three pure coal deposits. And the lake is also pretty large, so that would be a great spot to set up another set of coal factories. We've got this set up down here, which is working just fine. But three pure coal deposits, if we put Mark II miners on those bad boys, we can set up 48 coal generators just off of those three deposits. That's like... 3,600 units of power? Maybe? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Look at that. 3,600 megawatts. I can math. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what I want to do. 
Um, because we need to pick, we need to fix our power situation sooner rather than later. It's not a problem yet, but it's kind of getting to the point where if I wait any longer, it's going to become a problem. Um, so I think that's my next big thing is set up another giant coal processing plant or maybe oil. I need to look into oil and see what kind of goes into it. Um, and as far as research and stuff goes too, but yeah power generation we need to expand that as soon as possible so i made a decision uh i'm gonna go straight for the immersive piping uh or for the uh the upgraded fluid pipes uh which means we need plastic and rubber so i set up a bit of a oil production line here um there's a few oil nodes that are fairly close to our main base. They're like just kind of right off there in the distance. Um, our power situation is really not good right now. It's it's really not good. Like I actually had to turn some stuff off. You can see our max consumption is uh, only 50 under what we are producing with our current coil, or our current coal factories uh, or coal generators or whatever. So we need to get those other coal generators up and running as quickly as possible, but having the upgraded piping first will make that a lot easier to do uh, and a lot more uh, organized once I set it all up. So here's the oil setup. Basically back here, this is just a normal oil node and it has an oil pump on it, which uh, spits out 120 units of crude oil per minute. That then goes down this pipe, gets split between three different uh, uh, or three different refineries two of which are making plastic at 20 units per minute and one of which is making rubber because I've noticed that there's a, a few other things it, it seems like I'm gonna need a little bit more plastic right at the moment than I will rubber uh, but we need both so uh, yeah then that creates also heavy oil residue as a byproduct which I am then piping into another refinery and turning into petroleum coke, uh, which is then just going into these storage containers for the time being. Um, maybe I'll have a use for it later. For now, it's it's just kind of there to get it out of the system. I suppose I could uh, I could stick it into an awesome sink too, but that would take more power. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, actually, does it? Yeah, 30 megawatts of power for an awesome sink. So, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. And our power situation is not good. Uh, as for the uh, rubber and plastic, it's coming out of conveyor belts here, merging into a single line, which is going all the way back towards the main base. And then once it gets up there, it uh, hits a smart splitter and separates out uh, with plastic going to one large bin and rubber going to another. So that's basically the setup. Uh, and, you know, this will hopefully get me the plastic and rubber I need uh, so that I can get the upgraded piping and some of the other stuff too. Um, better logistics, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I think that is the plan uh, and you know what? I think I'm honestly out of time for this episode. We're at uh, 25 hours of playtime in this world so far over the course of five episodes. So, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> we're, we're making some progress. Um, but yeah, I think uh, what I'll probably do is get the necessary stuff between episodes. And I might, since we've already set up a coal factory or a coal power plant together... Um, I think I'll probably just do that between episodes as well and then show it to you uh, at the start of the next episode. Uh, that way we can have our power all good to go. Uh, maybe we can do like some aesthetic stuff, some decor, you know, some design build factory stuff on that. But I'll, I'll probably get the functional portion of it just done between episodes. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below. So check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.